Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice. It's the Battle of Hot vs. Cold Part 2, this time letting the color schemes do the talking as I create an icy version and a fiery version of the one-page rules Saurian Starhost Warriors. These sculpts, while intricate, can be done simply with just a few colors. Something for the scales, something for the armor, and some details, and they're battle ready. So they make great candidates for bold two or three color color schemes. There's a few things I want to mention before I get into the colors, and it has to do with how I printed these. When it comes to one-page rules models, you can print them in two ways, either as one complete model, or printed separately we can pick and choose heads and weapons. For these guys, I went and printed them in separate parts. That way I could pick matching heads for each of the poses, but also be able to keep the guns separate away from their chests. Painting a model in pieces like this will just save on some of the headache of getting into the areas behind the gun, and unless the gun is held right against the chest, it's not hidden from view either, so this will just make things a bit easier to get at. And lastly, I'm priming them in a light grey. One will end up pretty light overall, and the other dark, so starting from this middle ground will make it simpler to go one way or the other. I'll start with the blue for the icy version of the star host, because it's the most simple and only needs one little secret. I'll start with a phthalo blue, which is super vibrant, and some white. And well, it's still very saturated, but ice isn't a very saturated blue, so the secret is to mix in a little carbon black to desaturate it. This will push it towards that cooler complexion while still being quite saturated with color. This just gets base coated on all the open scales around his body. For highlights, I want to mix more white into the last mix, which is what makes the icy one pretty simple, since ice effects just highlight towards white most of the time. But I do want to keep the saturation down as well, so also add a little bit more black as needed. This is going to be an overall highlight. Right now this blue already seems pretty light since I'm starting from a light base, but rest assured, I'll be going even lighter still. Just some more white now into the mix and a bit of black too. This one is second last to the end, so I'm just going to start defining some shapes around his beefy but scaled muscles, just getting this for the most part in prominent areas and shapes. For the last mix, I'm going to reverse the process a bit and just take some of the pure white and add just a little bit of the darker mix to it. This should give me an off-white with some of that black and blue pigment still in there. Then I just pick out the highlight points of the detail, ignoring anything that goes too far under the model, and focusing towards sharp edges only. Time to flip things around now and turn the cold to hot. On my palette I've got red oxide, pyrrole red, chimera orange, and aerolide yellow. Now, I made a bit of a mistake here while I was on autopilot and mixed some of the orange into the red, but the actual secret to my lava scales recipe is actually going to be to mix in some of the yellow into every mix. So my first mix was supposed to be just the red and yellow, which I fixed later, but the idea is I'm starting bright, so like with laundry, the brights stay bright. The next mix should therefore be no secret, which is to take the orange and mix some of the yellow into that. This will be a pretty big jump in color, but since all of these are very transparent, red, orange, and yellow, they kind of do the blending automatically for us. Just getting it on top of the other color should be enough. Though if it's really transparent, just a tiny bit of white into the orange will help with opacity, but don't overdo it. You might be wondering what the red oxide is for. 
if so far I've just been getting brighter. Well, I still wanna do some shades in the deep recesses, but it's easier to put them in there after than before when it comes to these transparent colors. So I wanna make a wash, but a very thin wash as I want it to seep into all the cracks, but not stain the surface too much. So I'm just using some airbrush thinner and a little of my matte medium because airbrush thinners tend to dry more satin and a bit of the red oxide and red mixed. Then I use that to carefully soak, but not flood the surface of all the scales. Last thing for the lava scales is to give them some hot spots with the yellow. I don't wanna use just the pure yellow though because it might be a bit too cool for me, which is why I add just a little bit of the orange from the last mix. With this color, I just wanna pick out points and tips of things, further separating out each scale with some hot points, AKA highlights. So here we have the start of our temperature wars, each one already embracing its theme with just the first color. But now I'm going to have to do up the armor to really complement the styles. To complement the light blue of the icy Saurian, I think the only direction to go is lighter. On my palette, I have a black, an ultramarine blue, a raw umber, and a white. The full-on tube white this time, and not the ink. I need an off gray, so my mix is going to be lots of white, black to make it gray, and the umber and blue just to give it a little bit of an off tone. This may seem superfluous. Gray is gray, right? But the little boost of color can really take the dullness out of a pure gray which you can start to see the difference between the pure gray primer and the layer I'm adding with this. I never paint white without starting from a gray because there's just no way to highlight white since it's already the brightest color. So we need to have a tone to build up from. My base layer was a good start, but now I need to fill in all the plates while leaving shadows. So just add a bit more white to my original mix to lighten it. As long as it's not a pure white yet, it's hard to go wrong with how much. Then I fill in many of the panels again, but avoid pits and sharp corners. The final color can be easily guessed, and it's not a mix of anything, but a pure white. There's two good ways to apply it. The simple way is to just edge highlight, but not go too overboard with it, only catching edges that face light sources. Though to advance that a bit, the second way is to feather it off from those edges by either layering a diluted mix of the white and medium or using small amounts on a clean brush to feather it out. For the fire version, to complement the lava scales and make it stand out, I think I wanna go dark and make it look like igneous stone. I have burnt umber, dioxazine purple, and a black on my palette for this. I wanna keep some color even though this is going to be quite dark, which is why I have the brown, which I mix in with a bit of black. So what's the purple for? Well, as lava cools, it still gives off some light. So why not use a harmonious color like purple to give it just that little bit of vibrancy? Once I have this mix, I add a whole bunch more black for my starting layer. This then gets base coated into every single nook. Anything that's still gray is getting covered up with this, even the belts and straps. For a first highlight layer, I wanna go back to my original mix and add just a bit of white. It's gonna have some trouble showing up over the darker base layer I just put on, so the white will just help me see what I'm doing. The way I get this on is to kind of start the same way as the white, with an outline on the edges, but thick, and then stipple along that new edge that it makes and towards the center. I just need to brighten it up a tiny bit more, but instead of just adding white, I'm going to change the tone a bit and skip the purple this time, just adding some white into the burnt umber until it's lighter than my previous mix. The application is kind of the same as the white, but with a whole lot more texture, starting with the sharp lines and edges, but instead of fading, it's stippling to give the armor a much more rocky texture since I'm trying to make it appear as a hardened stone. One of the last things I'm going to show is adding some accents. And I feel like going with metallics this time around, so I've picked a few I think would look good with the opposing schemes. For the ice scheme, I'm going with sort of a dull gold in Viking gold from scale 75. Nothing too flashy, but still rich. And for the fire, I'm going with more of a copper, old copper to be specific. 
To get my starting layer, I mix the gold with the raw umber, and the copper with the burnt umber. There's only a few details on the Saurian I want to get this color on, and that's the crown on his helmet, the little crescents on his leg armor, but most importantly, this will be for the guns. It'll fill in a bulk of the weapon and make it stand out more on its own from the rest of the lizard. Now to go on with just the metallics, but I'm mixing in some matte medium. Blasphemy, I know, but I find them much easier to work with when they go matte so I can more easily see how they're layering up because when I use metallics, I aim for the same process as a non-metal metal, but with the metal, which is why I draw a majority of the metal flakes to a center point. For a final little highlight to the metals, just a bit of a medium silver into either of the base metals, along with the matte medium again. This is for all the sharp points and ridges along the edges, but also to brighten up the center of the reflection lines created in the first highlight on some of the smaller details. One of my tricks to making sci-fi models more sci-fi, even ones based in fantasy like these lizard men, is to give them lots of glowing parts. So I added some glow to the eyes, guns, and tails, just to get a third vibrant color in there. I really feel that these Saurian star host would be an awesome starter army for somebody new to the hobby to get into it with. They have so much potential for simple color schemes that vary between just two colors. So now that I've done fire and ice, we can look forward to next time when it'll be earth and water. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one or just other fun things to do with painting miniatures. And until next time, enjoy your own painting journey.